Hi guys. Yesterday I showed a um, video with the new, new to me, Blue Night Rubber Stamps holiday stamps. And this was one of them. Um, this one is called the Christmas Bunny. And I had mentioned that I wanted to do it with the distress background. So we're going to put this together real quick. Um, I just finished this one so it's not completely dry yet but can you see some of that shimmer in the tree and in the star so really simple to do we're gonna do this together real quick so the first thing I'm working on is some Bristol smooth cardstock um, anytime I'm doing distress ink blending I try to remember to use Bristol smooth con uh, cardstock because to me it just um, it's just a lot easier to blend we're going to mount our stamp set and we are going to use our VersaFine Claire black ink because we are going to be using some um, shimmer markers or watercolor markers and so we want to make sure that that ink's not going to move. And the piece of cardstock I'm using is cut down to I think it's five and a quarter by four. Yeah, five and a quarter by four. And I'm going to try to line this up. You could use your stamping tool, um, but this is pretty easy to do. Okay. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for this ink to set, what you want to do is cut out some um, masks. And I usually use um, post-it notes for my masks. Um, I do a masking paper, but I find that I hoard it and I just use the post-it notes. So all you do is you stamp it again on some post-it notes and you cut out your little makeshift masks. The good thing is, is that post-it notes are fairly cheap. Everybody has them. The new post-it notes are um, all over sticky. So... You can use one mask, stamp it out, and can cut it out, which I've already done. I'm just going to heat set this real quick to make sure it's nice and set. Okay, so I'm just going to reuse the masks I used on the first card. And again, I just used all over sticky post-it notes, which you can find um, usually at your local um, stationery store. Office Max, Staples, things like that. And um, they're cheap. You can use them one or two times before it's time to replace them. If you want to use real um, masking paper like Inca Dinka Doos masking paper, they usually last more than a couple times. So, and there we go. All right, so I have some Distress inks out. I'm going to start with some, and this is just regular Distress ink. You could use the Oxide as well. Tumbled Glass, Chipped Sapphire, Dusty Concord, and Black Soot. These are what I always go to for my nighttime colors. I always start with the lightest and move my way to the darkest. And in this case, I'm going to start with the Tumbled Glass. And all I'm going to do is just pull out from the star there. I just want that light blue to be kind of emanating out from the Bethlehem star. I live very, very close to the town of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And up on the mountain, there is a huge, huge star they call the Bethlehem star. Pretty neat this time of year. And that's all I'm going to do is just radiate a little bit of that light blue out. Then I'm going to move on to my next darkest color, which is the chip sapphire, which is like a dark navy. And I'm just going to go outside the radius of that and again the the advantage of using Bristol smooth is that if you have any kind of swirl marks and you don't think that you're blending it well um, it it gives you time to move your distress tool around a little bit and get a little bit smoother blend miss Leah's having a conversation Leah can you go upstairs please And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of the tree there. And this is our first layer of color. So it does not have to be blended perfectly. You just want to make sure you have color everywhere. And if you feel like you went into your star, just grab your... 
first color and you can push that color see how that color moved right out of the way you can push that darker color right back out of the way there nice radiating blend there okay so then the next color I have in line is dusty Concord which is a darker purple and again on this I'm just going to go around and basically line the edges of the card on the right and left side and on the bottom Just want to overlap that dark purple into the card here now you have to be careful because with Bristol smooth because that ink is sitting on top for a little bit allowing it to blend sometimes you can get your fingerprints in there so just be careful of that I'm trying to remember that and keeping my fingers on top of the um, the masks okay and then the last color I'm gonna go in with is black soot now depending on how deep and dark you want this you can keep going in and adding color with the Bristol smooth cardstock it's very easy to just keep going and keep adding color and keep blending it in that's why I like using this cardstock when I do any kind of distress inking or background inking sunsets um, galaxy skies nighttime skies winter skies So what I'm doing is just basically darkening up the edges. I want that light to be coming out of the star and brightening up everything in its path in the star. I'm going to add a little bit more of the chip sapphire right in this area here. Take a little of my light blue and just kind of push it out. but on the right and left sides I really want it to be kind of dark okay I think that's good enough for our distress ink background okay so now at this point what I didn't do on the first panel let me show you guys that was I put my my stars on kind of afterwards so they almost look like snow if you want it to look like stars you put them on afterwards because you don't want any um, I'm sorry you put them on first so at this point if I wanted stars and I don't want stars on my star or my tree or my um, bunny then I do the stars last so you can see kind of that pearlescent stars um, if you want it to look like snow I am speaking backwards today if you want it to be stars you do the stars right now so what I mean by that is you can do some white splatter paint you can do um, your what I used was the Sukuneko frost white if you want it to look like snow you do the snow at the end because then you can put the snow on the tree which I think I'm gonna add to this one to make it look like snow personal preference on what you want to do there but if I wanted this to look like stars I don't want stars on my tree you know because then it looks like snow so at this point I would do the splatter so I want to show you guys that technique what I normally use is not in its place uh oh I usually use my white Copic multi-liner and I just put a little bit on my um that's gonna drive me nuts now that it's not where I normally put it. I might be messy crafter, but I have everything in its place. And now I'm wondering what I do with my white Copic liner. Oh, here it is. I organized and put it away. How dare I? All right, so we're gonna do the stars technique on this one, not the snow technique. So this is Copic Opic Oh, Copic opaque white. I don't know why I called it multi liner. It's Cop Copic opaque white. And it gets a little bit um, kind of separated. So I just take the end of my paintbrush and mix it up. 
It's very, very thick. It's very, very opaque. It is like permanent white paint. But once you mix it up, it gets back to that consistency you want and it's not all separated. Okay, then all I do is what's left on the end of my brush there, I try to scrape off all the excess and I just kind of smear that onto the end of an acrylic block. So we all have acrylic blocks. That's all we're gonna need is that little bit. I'm gonna put the lid back on. I know, what a waste, right? We just mixed it up and that's all we're gonna use. Yep. So all this excess, I'm just gonna scrape off of my block. I'm gonna get a little paper towel. Clean that off the end of my brush because that, again, it is very, very permanent. should have used one of my scrubby brushes instead of one of my good brushes. Okay, but then what I want is a pretty long bristled, loose kind of brush. And I have a little bit of water I'm going to spray on the acrylic block. And I want that really loosey goosey watered down and when I have it to a real watery consistency with this long brush, I am just going to flick it downwards. And what this is going to do is give us odd sizes of stars. Now, you can do the exact same technique for snow, which I'm going to show you in a second. So these are my stars, and the reason they're stars is because they are not on the tree and they are not on the bunny. So I'm going to move this one, this panel out of the way a second. I'm gonna bring my other panel back in and now this is gonna become snow. Why is it snow? Because now I'm going to put it on my tree, on my bunny. Now it's everywhere. This is now from a normal, regular scene to a snow scene. So same technique, it just depends on if you do it over your masking or under your masking. Whether you have stars or whether you have um, snow. You can also use like pearlescent paints. Um, people take and mix up like your, your pearlescent powders, um, the Brutus Monroe powders. If you have Nouveau Mousse in silver, you can take that. Anything that you can water down that would be opaque, you would do that. So now because I did this over my bunny and over my tree, it looks like it's a snow card because snow is very random and in different sizes. So we're going to put this one away and let it dry a little bit. We're gonna get back to this one. Now this one, we do have the, the stars kind of everywhere. So what you might want to do is give it a second to dry or heat set it. I'm just gonna clean my brush off real quick. I don't want that opaque white stuck to my brush. And I'm just gonna take a heat tool to this and dry it real quick. I'm gonna pull my masks off. Now, if your masks are still mostly sticky, what I do that is store them with my stamp set so that the next time I want to use them, they are good to go and I know where they are because they're with the stamp set. And if they're crusty and you know, kind of wilted, then you throw them out and you make new ones, no big deal. All right, so we're just gonna take the heat tool to this. Oops. Right, so now the fun part is actually the easiest part and that's just coloring it in. So all I'm using are the Spectrum Noir glitter pens. 
Um, if you have some of these or something similar, you could also use watercolor markers. We have the, um, um, the mermaid markers, the Arteza markers, any of those kinds of markers. And I'm going to start with this light, light blue one. This one's called Moonstone. And for that one, I'm going to go right in and do my Star of Bethlehem. Just in the center. You could do yellow. You can do blue. You can do whatever you want. It's your card. And it does sit on top for just a second, and then it will soak in. I have a scrap piece of Bristol here, so if you don't know how your color is going to look on your card and you want to test it out, for example, I have two colors of brown, and here that one just dripped everywhere. That would have been awful on my card, so I'm kind of glad that I practiced on my little scrap sheet of paper there. This is a super dark brown. I think I'm going to use this for the trunk of the tree. I think this is because I store my markers on their side instead of up and down. So I'm going to have to change my storage on that because that just blobbed ink everywhere. This is a lighter brown. So I'm going to do the bunnies, the back of his ears his and his body. I am not going to do his tail. He has a little foot there. And I'm using short, almost kind of circular movements when I'm coloring him in because I want it to look kind of like fur. I know this is a hand-drawn effect, and it's not going to be so detailed, but when you do that, it does give it a little bit of texture because these are shimmer sparkle pens, so they leave a little bit of, like, mica shimmer behind. All right, and then for the tree, I have two different color greens. I have holly leaf, and I'm just going to follow the squiggles of the tree here. Making sure I don't dip into that brown. If I dip into the brown, it will... Um, spread that out and then the other green I have is a little darker this is called forest walk and anywhere that I missed I'm just going to go in with that darker random patches just to give it a mixture of colors and it's fun because this is such a whimsical design it's very free-flowing and hand-drawn that it doesn't have to be perfect but putting those two different colors on there gives that tree a little bit more dimension a little more fun to it and then all I did was the little clear um, sparkle pen is I want to make sure my tip is clean because it's been used for mixing and stuff and I'm going to do a little bit on his tail and then I'm going to just kind of draw some radiating out following the star there and then if you wanted to add some more sparkle you could certainly go in and add some more to your little stars there so there we go and then I'll just mount this on a card panel so we have an easy distress background we have some fun sparkle markers but again any markers I have you could even do color pencils or Copic markers if you wanted to but I thought with such a nice simple design that those sparkle pens would really give you something to ooh and ah at when you see when the light hits that now this one's still wet so you could take a heat gun to it and let it dry or let it dry naturally but this one is done and you can still see our snow even over the sparkle, you have that sparkle bunny, sparkly tree, sparkly star. And you could stamp a cute little sentiment on there if you wanted to. So there we go. Cute little holiday card with this bunny. And again, this is called Christmas Bunny and it's from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. If you like this video, I appreciate your thumbs up so I know that you guys like these kinds of videos. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to post your comments or questions down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. I will link a copy of this stamp in the uh, video description down below. And if you're not subscribed, I'll put a little bubble right here in the corner. It'll have me holding my thumbs up. Click on that button and you'll get us you'll be subscribed at any time I post a new video. Um, it will notify you if you hit the little bell icon. It'll notify you that I um, posted a video for you. But thanks for watching, guys. And as always, keep on stamping. Good night. Bye-bye.